Sabate, ladies. Today we're going to tackle a chapter in Wheelock, uh, chapter 32, which is kind of a hodgepodge of a couple different things. So it's going to seem like we're going to uh, do a little bit of this and then a little bit of that. And uh, it's true. We are going to do that. Um, the first thing we, we are going to do is look at the formation and comparison of adverbs. Um, we are then going to tackle three more um, irregular verbs. Uh, we are also going to uh, to learn how to do negative commands. So you know how to do a regular command, the imperative. Now you're going to learn how to do a negative command. Um, and then we end with another um, subjunctive subordinate clause um, in the proviso clauses. Okay, so let's get started. We have so much to do. So formation of adverbs in the positive degree. So remember that um, adjectives have three degrees, right? Positive, comparative, and superlative. Um, well, adverbs have the same. You can have an adverb in the positive degree, comparative degree, or superlative degree. Now, some words, ladies, are just adverbs. They just are, right? They're not formed from an adjective. Ubi, where, ibi, there, semper, always, sipe, often, cross, tomorrow, <clears throat> uh, Harry, yesterday, hodier, today. Um, but adjectives can also be made into adverbs, and they are done um, by adding a suffix, actually, just like we do in English. So in English, we make an adjective into an adverb by adding uh, the suffix ly. So bad becomes badly, right? Beautiful becomes beautifully. Free becomes freely. Brave, bravely. Happy, happily. Uh, wise, wisely. So we have all of these um, adverbs that can then, excuse me, adjectives that can then be used as adverbs. Okay. Um, so you need to know two rules, okay, for making um, a positive degree adjective into a positive degree adverb. Um, the first is uh, for first and second declension adjectives. To make those into adverbs, you add an E to the adjective base. So, malus, bad, becomes male, badly. Polker, beautiful, becomes polkre. Um, and again, remember that the in, for, in the adjective base for polker, the E falls out. Liber becomes libre. Okay? Easy. Um, third declension adjectives uh, form into adverbs by adding iter to the adjective base unless the adjective base ends in an nt and then you just add er. Okay? So, some examples of this as well. Fortis becomes fortiter, brave to bravely. Felix becomes felicitor right? Um, happy to happily. Uh, sapiens has an adjective base of sapient. So instead of, it, instead of adding the iter, we just add er. So sapiens becomes sapienter. So there you go. Wise to wisely. Now, just like um, the adjectives can become comparative or superlative, so can adverbs, um, to form the comparative of adverbs, you add the ending ius to the adjective base. So we're going to look at some examples of that below. And to form the superlative of adverbs, you add isime to the adjective base. And again, we'll see some examples of this. Now, you know it can't be that simple, right? Because just as there are some irregular comparatives and superlatives for adjectives, there are irregular comparative and superlatives for adverbs, okay? The first one being those irregular LIS adjectives, um, uh, similis, dissimilis, difficilis, faculis, gracilis, and humilis. Um, they too are going to form their comparative and superlative adverb um, slightly irregularly. They're going to double their L. So instead of becoming isame, they're just lame. Okay, double L, I M E. Um, all adverbs whose adjectives end in er in their superlative make their super in, sorry in their positive form uh, form their superlative adverb by doubling the r instead of isame. It's erame. Okay, and I have some examples of all of these. So our first um, example, longe, far, becomes longius, farther, and longissime, farthest. Okay. 
Um, but liber, uh, which means free, becomes libere as an ad, as an adverb, and then um, liberius more freely, and then doubles its r liberame to become most freely. Same with pulcher, pulcreus, pulcherame, uh, calariter, calarius, calarame. All three of those adjectives end in er in their nominative singular masculine. So when they get to their um, superlative, they double their R's. And then, of course, humilis is one of our irregular six LIS adjectives. So when it forms the adverb, humilitaire, lowly or humbly, uh, humilius, more lowly or more humbly, and then it doubles its L, humilime, uh, most lowly or most humble. Um, there are also, there is also a list of um, highly irregular comparative and superlative adverbs. Um, this complete list is on pages 265 to 266 of your textbook, and um, you should study them for the vocab quiz because they will certainly be on the vocab quiz. Um, okay, so those are adverbs. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about um, an irregular verb and its two compounds. Okay, so the irregular verb wolo, welle, wallowy, it means to wish, and it has two compounds, nolo, to not wish, and malo, to wish more or to prefer. Um, so a couple things about wolo and its two compo co compounds, nolo and malo. Um, they have no passive forms. This is why there is no fourth principal part because, of course, um, that's the perfect passive participle. We, there is no passive. Um, really, the only irregular forms of this verb are in the present indicative and the present subjunctive. Um, now, wolo and, to some extent, nolo and malo also have some forms that drop out, but in terms of just purely irregular forms, um, that would be... Uh, just the present indicative and the present subjunctive, okay? The, the perfect, as always, is completely regular. Um, this is why I love the perfect, blue perfect, and future perfect, because it always forms the same for all verbs. Huzzah! Um, the imperfect subjunctive forms um, are exactly what you'd expect. They follow the rules, right? It's the second principal part plus the endings. It's just that the second principal part, the present active infinitive looks a little strange, right? It's welle instead of any kind of ere or ire or anything like that. Um, but it still follows the rules, so no problem there. Um, there is only one participle, and that's the present active uh, participle. Um, and uh, wolo and malo actually have no imperatives. Nolo does have an imperative, and it's used for a specialized purpose, which we'll talk about um, in just a second. So those are that's the rundown for what makes wolo and nolo malo um, irregular. Since the only forms that are actually irregular are the present indicative and the present subjunctive, I have given you the forms of the present um, active indicative and the present active subjunctive. Um, you can see uh, how irregular it is. Wolo, wees, wolt. Wallumus, woltus, wallunt. Um, we're going to take note of how these compound, or how the compound nolo follows this pattern on the next slide. Um, and then the uh, present active subjunctive um, looks like actually the, the, the conjugation of, of, of sum in the present subjunctive, right? Sim, si, sit, sim, si, descent. Well, willem, willis, willit, willemus, willitus, willent. So there you go. It follows a pattern, just not the pattern you expect. Um, you can see that nolo, to not wish, in three of the forms are just one word, and then for three of the forms is literally known, plus the verb uh, wolo. So, nolo, I do not wish, but in the second person singular, known weis, you do not wish. Known walt, he or she or it does not wish. Um, but then, nolumus, we do not wish. Known woltus, you do not wish. Nolunt, they do not wish. So again, just a very highly irregular compound to a highly irregular verb. Um, and again, in the um, present subjunctive, you see the same pattern again, right? 
the sim c sit semi citus sent um no limb no lease no let no lemus no letus no lent one more um malo which means to prefer more i mean excuse me to wish more or to prefer um uh actually is fairly straightforward malo mawis mawolt malumus mawoltus malunt again an irregular compound to an irregular verb um and again it's subjunctive follows that 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 pattern for sem cis sit semis cetus sent to uh as malim malis malit malimus malitus malent okay all right now the specialized use of the imperative of nolo is to give negative commands. Okay, so nolo is the only one of those three verbs that even has an imperative. Um, so its singular is noli, its plural is nolita, okay? And it's used to form negative commands. So a positive command, or at least just a regular old command, is an imperative. To make, um, to command someone not to do something, you use the imperative of nolo, so either noli in the singular or nolite in the plural, plus an infinitive of the action you do not want them to do. So I have two examples here. Nolite manere hic cagnorati. So do not nolite, and then our infinitive to remain tells us what not to do. So nolite manere hic. Do not remain here, conspirators. Um, there you go, a little vocative in there for you. Um, and then another example, this time the singular negative command, noli discera mi amike. So do not depart, my friend. Um, for the most part, when you're using um, nolite, when you're making these negative commands, nolite and noli just translate as don't. And then whatever you're telling someone not to do is in the uh, infinitive. Okay, our last lesson in this little um, hodgepodge lesson, this hodgepodge chapter in Wheelock, um, are proviso clauses. Proviso clauses are a subjunctive subordinate clause, so you should put it on your subjunctive subordinate clause sheet because it's another one, um, and it tells us the provision under which the action of the main verb takes place, okay? Um, it's set up with the conjunction demodo, and if you want to do a negative provision, a negative proviso, it's demodo ne, okay? And for the most part, it translates as provided that, because that's the provision under which the main um, action is going to happen. So let's take a look at our first, ooh, our first example. Um, Nullus Romanus Timuit, demodo consoles hic roman, uh, excuse me, manere. Okay, so no Roman was afraid, provided that the consuls remained here. So um, the provision for no Roman being afraid, our main sentence, is that the consuls remain here. Okay, um, so provided that the consuls remain here. Um, and then our second example, salvi eritis de modo ne ex hoc loco descadatus, um, descadata, sorry. Um, and uh, again, we have a negative proviso clause here. Um, eritis salvi, you will be safe. De modo ne, negative proviso, provided that you do not um, depart ex hoc loco for, out of this place or from this place. Okay. Um, bring your notes in and any questions you have tomorrow and, uh, have a good night, ladies. Well, that day.